The Metro franchise is a pretty popular franchise, but it's never been on a Nintendo platform before. Metro Last Light was being worked on for the Nintendo Wii U, but due to technical issues in the development of the game, the game never saw the light of day, no pun intended. And honestly, it's a shame, because there's not really many story-driven first-person shooters on Nintendo platforms. Really, aside from Wolfenstein 2, there hasn't been much in this genre even on the Nintendo Switch, but Metro Redux, or Redo, is here to fix that. Originally releasing on the PS4 and the Xbox One, Metro Redux features two Metro games, 2033 and Last Light, with improvements made in both graphics and gameplay. But how do these games fare on the Nintendo Switch, and is the Nintendo Switch version of this compilation worth checking out? What's up guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, but without any further ado, let's get into the world of Metro Redux on the Nintendo Switch and see if it's a game that you'll want to pick up. So the story of Metro actually follows a popular book series of the same name. A nuclear war breaks out in the year 2013, wiping out, well, most of the world. Some people were able to survive by living underground, with one of these regions being in Russia. Obviously, because of this, surface levels are filled with radiation, making it very unsafe to venture out without proper equipment. Plus the fact that due to this radiation levels in the world, it is now filled with mutant creatures. In Metro 2033, you play as a character named Artem, and now the year is 2033. Surprise, surprise. Various political forces such as Kamis and Nazis are in a stronghold to try and take over what is left of the world, and the Russian people now live underground in the metro tunnels that were once used for transportation. Artem basically wants to find out what is happening in the world and try to save the people of Metro, and improve life for all those that are currently alive. A strange presence known as the Dark Ones are also involved with life on the surface, which Artem is bound to solve. The sequel, Metro Last Light, picks up where the first game ends off, and has you playing as Artem once again. Both games honestly have a really good story, with various characters aiding you along your way, some of them turning their back on you, and some supernatural elements mixed in as well. Although Last Light is a direct sequel to Metro 2033, there is a brief recap of the story that helps fill you in as to what happens. Honestly, I felt like Last Light could have been its standalone game on its own story merits, but if you want all of the back history, it's probably better to play 2033 first so that you can understand everything going on in the game. Now the gameplay in both games is pretty similar, as the Redux Edition implements features that were added into Last Light into 2033 as well. I would say the best way to describe these games are first person shooter horror games, but I do feel like that's a bit limiting as to what the package really is because there's a bunch of different elements incorporated into both games. At the start of each game, you will choose to play the game with a more survival horror feel with limited resources or a more traditional first person shooter game with more ammunition available. Now for 2033, I played the game with the survival horror feel and for Last Light, I went with the first person shooter feel. There's not really a whole hell of a lot of difference between the two I felt, aside from the more limited resources you have available, but most of the time I never really felt all too limited in my ammunition. The game does offer some stealth segments should you choose to go about things in a more discreet manner when dealing with the human characters. As you go throughout the game in the tunnels, you'll encounter various mutant creatures which just require full on blasting, but you'll also encounter enemy camps from both political sides and vagrants who basically don't want you in their little camps. These are the main areas where you can acquire things like more ammunition and health, as not only you can discover ammunition in this area that these people are holding on to, but you can also loot their bodies after you eliminate them as well. Things like turning out the lights or turning out your headlamp, along with stealth melee kills, really make some of these segments stand out, and there's always that fun feeling of being caught and everything just turning into a full-on firefight as well. In addition to that, there's also some minor puzzle elements, quick time events, and even some full on warfare style segments such as a rail car scene where you're barreling down with a huge weapon blasting away enemies trying to take you out. I actually really enjoyed all the different gameplay elements that the game throws at you because it keeps things fresh throughout your playthrough of these games. There's even some downtime segments where you visit friendly underground towns within the metro. In these towns, you could do things like resupply your ammo, or customize your weapons, or even buy new ones from various shops. They did a really great job with these towns, especially in Last Light, by offering things like children crowding around puppet shows and jugglers to give you a sense of desperation in these tunnels that these people are obviously feeling. 
Sometimes I would just walk around and listen to the NPCs talk to each other and learn about things happening in the town. And honestly, it was fascinating because everyone seemed to have like a story to tell, even if it might have been a minor thing. There's also some documents you can find underground as well that give you some more backstory as to what's happening in these areas, should you choose to do that. So it's pretty cool to try and find all of these. At times you will also go above ground as well to the surface, and this implements another gameplay mechanic, oxygen use. The radiation levels on the surface will cause Artem to die pretty quickly, so use of a mask with mask filters is key. You have a limited amount of time with each filter, so finding or buying more filters is essential in order to stay alive on the surface. Running out of filters will pretty much screw you over, so it's best to have as many filters available as you can. I really like the surface level interactions in the game because it gives you a glimpse as to what happened in these areas, plus there's really some fun mutants that you come across as well that could absolutely kick your ass. Now one of the most impressive things about Metro Redux has to be the presentation. Now originally these games were released on the Xbox 360 and the PC, but the Redux collection was released on the Xbox One and PS4 and features things like gameplay improvements, AI adjustments, and of course better graphics. Right off the bat, both of the games are featured on the Nintendo Switch cartridge should you choose to go the physical route, with no additional download required, which is fantastic and honestly, I'm not even sure how the hell they did this. The graphics in the game are superb for the Nintendo Switch as well, with detailed environments, character models, and an absolutely fantastic lighting system. There's tons of little effects in the lighting as well, and everything just looks really clean with no frame rate issues. Now I played Metro 2033 on the Xbox One, and while it doesn't look quite as good as that, which is of course to be expected, it is a damn fine job for the Nintendo Switch. What's even more impressive is the fact that the game suffers no blur effect in handheld mode. Now as someone who played Wolfenstein 2 on the Nintendo Switch in handheld mode quite a bit, it was very refreshing to see how clean everything was in Metro Redux as opposed to Wolfenstein 2. I will say that even though both games use the same engine for the graphics system, I do prefer the look of Last Light more so than 2033. I feel like they expanded upon things better in the underground segments with things like more details, and the main thing is that 2033 takes place in the winter, whereas Last Light takes place in the spring. There's a lot more variety in the environments in Last Light because of the season change, and sometimes you get really lush yet dead areas, whereas in 2033 everything is pretty much covered in snow and ice. The audio in the game is fantastic as well, with great voice acting throughout and some really creepy sound effects. Guns sound great, enemies scream in pain, and it's just a great experience on both the eyes and the ears. Metro Redux honestly packs quite a bit of content into it as well. Metro 2033 will take you around 7 or 9 hours to complete, and Last Light will take you around 9 to 10 hours to complete. Of course some of this is contingent on your playstyle, but still that's a good amount of content for each game. There are also two endings for each game as well, and it's based on if you do moral things in the underground cities of the game, but I'll let you figure that out on your own. The Nintendo Switch version of the game also features gyro control, which is nice for people who like to use gyro controls. I checked them out and I thought they worked well, but I went with a pro controller for most of my gameplay. Now besides the main game, Last Light actually features a bunch of DLC missions as well, and one of them is absolutely fantastic. In one of these DLC missions, you are basically put into an underground bunker, and you have a list of items to bring back to this bunker that are on the surface. Finding these items will get you more currency, which will allow you to upgrade your weapons, armor, and buy more masks. The items are basic items that most households will have, but since you are on the surface and having to limit your oxygen, you don't have all the time in the world to find these things. Along with that, creatures are roaming on the surface as well and trying to take you out, so you basically have to go in little spurts into the outer world and try to find these items. I absolutely love this, and I thought it was just so much fun, because obviously you aren't going to find all these items in one visit to the surface, as you can only carry five at a time, and it was so tense exploring this huge open world area, trying to find items, manage my oxygen, and get back to the base before dying from mutant creatures. It was absolutely brilliant. There's a lot of great variety in the DLC missions as well, and it really elongates what Last Light brings to the table in terms of gameplay. I really don't have too many complaints about Metro Redux on the Nintendo Switch. It's a fantastic port of two great games that never released on a Nintendo platform before, and Switch owners are in for a real treat. 
Now, Metro Redux does come at a $50 price tag. Now, that's fine considering the amount of content you get for the $50, but you have to keep in mind that this collection has been available on the PS4 and the Xbox One for quite a while and is often on sale for $20 or less. Metro Redux is actually available on Xbox Game Pass as well, meaning if you have the service already, you can just download these games and essentially play them for free. So if you're a multi-platform owner, it might be smarter to pick up Metro Redux on the PS4 or download it from Xbox Game Pass. However, if you only own a Nintendo Switch, I think this is a great package to pick up. If you decide to go digitally with these games, you can actually pick them up at $25 a piece as well, so if money is kind of strapped, you can just get one for now and save one for later. The games both still feel very fresh, and the variety and the story in these games are just superb experiences. There's a lot of bang for your buck with these games, and honestly, I have no regrets about buying it for my Nintendo Switch. Alright, so those are my thoughts on Metro Redux for the Nintendo Switch. I was really blown away with the fact that they fit both of these games on the cartridges and there really wasn't much done in terms of sacrifices to fit them on there. There's a whole ton of content, the graphics look great, everything just looks really smooth, and the additional DLC that you get for free with Last Light is just a hell of a lot of fun. So let me know in the comments section down below if you're a fan of the Metro series or if this is going to be your first time checking it out and if you plan on picking up the Nintendo Switch version of the game. And as always guys, thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel like i said at the start be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications be sure to check out some other videos on the channel we have a bunch of reviews going up right now that you guys can take a look at the samurai showdown review is up warface a whole bunch of stuff probably stuff i even forgot about be sure to check out the pinned comment in the comment section down below if you want to get the complete sega 32x guide maybe a little bit of rgt merch or follow me on social media and as always i'll catch you guys on the next episode later